Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. I'm holding my girl Salt here, of course the albino alligator, who I love to death. And you guys know, a dog tame, right? Well, I tell you what, um, every now and then she teaches me a lesson and that lesson is she's still an alligator, right? So uh, we're gonna have a fun time today explaining what happened. And to set this up, uh, actually what happened was last night a few people were actually getting to interact with her and uh, yeah, this happened. Yep, in my surprise, I actually for some reason tried to touch her mouth because she had a little tooth loose and she immediately snapped my finger. Uh, my initial response was, uh-oh, this isn't good. Of course, the big thing is when something like this happens is to not panic, to keep calm. And immediately, everyone around didn't even know what had happened, so I just very slowly and gently took her back and just kind of sat there, keeping myself as calm as I could be, not only for my own self, but I didn't want anyone around to be worried about it as well. Yeah, I was pretty much assaulted. Well, the truth is, have you ever like uh, looked at a saw while it's going and thought, I wonder what it would be like if I touched that? Well, okay, maybe you haven't, but I have. Well, the fact is, is you can actually see right there, she is missing a tooth. Now, alligators will literally lose up to 2,000 teeth in their lifetime and regrow them, so it's very common. Well, I don't know what I was thinking, but believe it or not, I saw that the tooth was loose, and for some reason, I just kind of reached to try to grab it and yeah uh, she got the best of me. Now you have to remember, alligators have the second largest bite force of any animal on the planet, only second to the great white shark. Now salt isn't a big animal, of course, but she has a tremendous bite force and she was clamping down really hard. And every time I would move my finger a little bit, she would clamp down even harder. Now I wasn't sure if she was gonna hang on for 30 seconds or for a half hour, and there's not much you could do. You can't pry their mouth open without hurting them. So I had to literally just to sit there, be calm. To be honest with you, I was just chatting with everyone as they were watching my finger get bit and blood was rolling down my hand. I wanted them to realize it wasn't really that big of a deal. Sure, was it painful, but I knew I wasn't in any danger at all. And to be honest with you, I didn't want salt to stress out. So I just kind of sat there and took it for a while. After about five minutes of her not coming off, I kind of got to a point where I thought, well, what if I set her on the ground? Maybe she would let go. Now I knew there was a little chance if I put her on the ground and let her go that she could actually death roll, which could be really bad. So I was really careful how I did it. Sure enough, as soon as I set her down, she didn't let go and she started to waggle around a little bit, which hurt a lot worse. So I had to just pick her back up and again, just figure, hey, I'm going to just have to wait this one out. Seemed like an eternity went by, to be totally honest with you. But she finally let go really quick. I pulled away and then she grabbed the keys around my neck. Yep, she just grabbed the keys and she wouldn't let go of the keys. I thought, okay, well, at least my thumb is out, but I certainly don't want her to eat my keys, that would be really bad for her. You know, we don't want her to eat metal objects. So now I have to hang on to the metal keys to make sure that she didn't try to actually eat them, which was another dilemma that I had going on. Then I pulled out an old trick. You know, of course I had the towel wrapped around my finger because I was bleeding pretty good. And I knew that if you covered an alligator or crocodile's eyes, sometimes it would calm them down. So I decided to put the towel over her eyes, hoping that she would eventually let go of the keys. And sure enough, after a few minutes, she did let go of the keys, but then she decided to grab the towel. At this point, I really wasn't concerned about her eating the towel, so I decided to put her back in her cage, knowing that once I put her back in her cage, she might just let the towel go, or she might just whip it around or something like that. She did a couple big wags, let it go, and that was the end of a pretty crazy experience. So I tell you what, my girl Salty, She's such an amazing animal, I gotta be honest with you, but I do have to keep remembering that these animals are wild animals and I've gotta be careful. Sometimes we work with these animals so much every single day, sometimes we forget that they have the ability to actually inflict some pretty good damage, right? And thankfully, you know, the way I handle it when I get bit, you know, nothing could happen. If she would have ripped away or if I would have like pulled away really hard, you know, I would have probably gotten some stitches, who knows? Maybe if she rolled if I wasn't holding onto her, maybe I would have broke a finger. I mean, the fact fact is, is that, you know, when we're having other people handle animals like salt or any of the animals here, we're always super careful with them, but oftentimes when we're handling, we kind of forget to be safe ourselves. So I certainly learned a valuable and uh, quite frankly, a pretty painful lesson from my girl Salt, the friendly alligator. Uh, yeah, I won't be picking any teeth out of her mouth ever again. And I know you guys are curious to see what happened. To be honest with you, it doesn't look too bad. You see three kind of puncture wounds right there where the teeth kind of sunk in, and trust me, they were sunk in pretty deep. And then believe it or not, right here on this finger, 
the tooth went right through my nail. Now it's a good thing it went through the nail a little bit because it relieved pressure, right? If it didn't relieve pressure, I might have actually lost this fingernail. But I gotta be honest with you, uh, it doesn't look too bad, but it certainly hurt really, really bad. And uh, again, it could have been a lot worse if my reaction was different to it. So all in all, it worked out. And again, like I said, it taught me a valuable lesson. It would appear there's a jailbreak. That's right, Matilda, I didn't put a lock on the door. She gets out every now and then, but really, she doesn't do any harm, right? She's a tortoise, so let's find, oh, there she is. What are you doing, silly monkey? Did you just get out and walk around yourself? I kind of like it. I actually think it's cool that she just kind of pushes her way out when she wants to and just kind of comes around and hangs out. What up, girl? What are you doing, silly monkey? What are you doing? You're such a good girl. Oh my God, isn't she the cutest thing in the world? It's crazy to have like a giant tortoise, you know, as a pet. And uh, I, I probably should put a lock on that just uh, to be safe because, you know, sometimes when she gets out, she knocks a bunch of stuff over and stuff like that. But uh, I just think it's kind of cool that she can let herself out. And I guarantee you, if I just let her run, which I'm going to, here in the next hour or so, she'll go right back in her pen just like she always does. So it's not like she's going to do any harm or at least any major harm at least. But uh, nevertheless, what are you doing, silly? I know. Are you hungry? Do you want some food? That's what it is. She's begging. She's like a, a puppy dog. She's begging for food right now. Night Fury is a perfect example of an animal that you have to keep a little bit more attention to when you got it out because it's just such a food aggressive animal. And that's the thing, when we're actually taking animals out for people, we're really keeping a really good eye on the animal, we're keeping a good eye on the people, and we just wanna keep everyone safe, you know what I mean? So, and that happens, and, and you've gotta really know your animals. Again, there's a big difference between taking Sunrise out, which is a puppy dog that, you, you know, you pay attention, but you know, nothing could possibly happen. And then you have an animal, let's say, like Night Fury here, which is a little bit less predictable. Again, Perdita's a retic just like Night Fairy and is super predictable. So you don't have to worry about her as much. But even with the most predictable animals, we want to keep really close attention. And I preach that to everyone here that works during the open hours when people are here or when we're doing tours with Jay or anything like that. We always want to really pay attention to the animal's behavior. We want to pay attention to the way people are handling them and just to make sure that everyone stays safe. And even though I said that Perdita is so predictable, the truth is she even bit me once. Okay guys, so I'm in a little bit of a precarious position here, believe it or not, of all creatures, Perdita got me. Ah, come on girl, let go. Come on girl, I'm not food baby. And yeah, she's got really big teeth. The good news is she's not really twerking around too much, but she doesn't want to let go. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, 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 come on, come on, let go. Hey Bruce, are you there? Yeah, do you have any mouthwash or anything over here yet? So we're just gonna put some mouthwash and hopefully usually the menthol kind of alcohol thing and mouthwash will make them release. There you go, yep, yep, go ahead. Just a little bit. Oh, she just decided to clamp down. Okay, Woo. All right, so uh, she's not happy about the mouthwash and uh, there you go. First time I've ever been bitten by Perdita. And that's right. Every single time I have ever been bitten by a reptile, and that's, I'm not even kidding, at least 100,000 times, it is 100% always been my fault. When Perdita actually did get me, it was me just being silly. I just opened up the cage and I didn't really give her the respect she deserved. You know, she was ready to feed. I just went in there not thinking of it and she grabbed my hand and it was a food response. That was my fault, not her fault. It was completely my fault. Even an unbelievably dog tame animal like Elvis one time got me. Again, same thing, I had fed him, I reached down like I always did, and instead I didn't pay attention, put my hand right in front of his mouth, he was thinking, oh, I'm still getting fed, grabbed my fingers. It hurt, yeah, it was a bummer. But you know what, again, every time I have ever been bitten by a reptile, I have never ever blamed them for doing it. It's always been my fault, getting lackadaisical. I mean, let's face it, who tries to touch an alligator's tooth? I don't care how tame your alligator is, you should not try to touch its tooth, you know? And it was just a lapse of judgment with me. I just thought, oh, she's so docile. I'm just gonna go ahead and see, is that tooth loose? Cause it looked like it was loose and I was just gonna kind of pick its tooth off and I thought it'd be really kind of cool to show everybody. But that was a stupid mistake on my part. It was me being overconfident and just kind of lackadaisical. We've got to keep remembering that they're animals. I mean, again, we work with these every day. These become like our puppy dogs, right? I mean, these are our little pets, but you know what? Even dogs can get into a bad mood every now and then or just strike out at you or accidentally bite you or whatever case is. And it's something that we have to keep in mind. So in no way do I blame salt. It was 100% my fault. 
And you guys know no matter what goes on each day, I have to come down here and switch my bows and pythons around because that's the way you have a successful breeding season. And that wraps that up. By the way, let me know what you think of that moving time-lapse shot. Uh, that took us about an hour to get ready, so I hope that you enjoyed the 15 seconds of it there. Let me know in the comments what you think. Hey guys, you send us all kinds of really cool stuff in the mail and stuff like that. Well, just a couple days ago, Olivia here. Hi, Olivia. Hi. Hi. She said that you never sent her anything in the mail, so if you ever want to send Olivia something, uh, go ahead and you can send it. Link in the description, okay? Have to work on cleaning this basement up and getting this thing. That's the next big job going on. No, what are you doing? You working on anything? I thought Exciting? my computer just broke for a oh, second. Oh, that would have been horrible. It wouldn't boot up. It was like oh. so dead, it took 10 minutes to charge. Oh, but that's, that's scary. That's wow, what's scary. up? What's up? <laughs> but, uh, you know, make sure you guys are still paying Noah some love over on his channel. Don't he's dropping. Any love. No, he's dropping some really good videos. Dead serious. I think it's amazing. So, uh, link in the description. Go show him some love for me, please. Thank you. I'm in Drogo's enclosure, of course, and I've got to tell you something. Jay is off today. You guys may or may not know this, but Drogo loves Jay, and Drogo loves Lori. Drogo doesn't love me as much, right? And he puts up with me, but uh, he'll try to nip me from time to time so Lori or Jay can be patting him and just hanging out with him. And then I go to pet him and he opens his mouth. So what I'm gonna do today, don't tell Jay. I've got him some hibiscus leaves, his favorite. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to spoil him a little bit. Do you want Drogo? Do you want? Do you want hibiscus? Do you want some? Do you want some? Come on, bud. Want some hibiscus? There he goes. And maybe he'll start to think like, oh, this Brian guy is pretty cool. He brings me treats. Now, uh, again, don't tell Jay because if Jay finds out that I was giving him treats without his permission, I would get in trouble, you know? So, shh. But hopefully Drogo will start to love me as much as he loves Jay. So I'm going to do this all the time. I'm going to give him another little leap. Here you go, baby. You want another one? There you go. There you go. And he loves hibiscus, so uh, I'm gonna win him over, right? That's the right thing to do, right? So uh, <laughs> I love this guy. And don't get me wrong, he tolerates me, but he definitely doesn't love me like he loves Jay, and it kind of hurts my heart, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna do the best I can do to win this little monkey over, and hopefully uh, he will start to love me maybe even more than he loves Jay. And by the way, we have just a couple little trees that we literally have under grow lights here in Michigan uh, that we're growing some hibiscus, but I, we don't have very many. So if anyone grows hibiscus and can send us some hibiscus, Hibiscus leaves that can somehow get here where we can give him treats often. Please let me know. Just email us over at BHB or the Reptarium or whatever the case is. We definitely need a bunch because he loves them. It's the treat that he loves more than anything. And the rate we're growing, growing these little tiny trees up, we're never going to have enough supply. And I need supply to win him over. So there is no doubt that it hurt when Salt bit me. <laughs> she is getting big and she's got some powerful jaws. With that being said, totally my fault. I do not judge her. She's amazing and she's an incredible animal and it's not going to stop us doing what we already do. We just don't want to take a tooth out of her mouth in the future. If you enjoyed this video, here is a playlist right here. I hope that you guys can maybe watch one or two videos. It helps me out tremendously. I do appreciate you. Up here, you can subscribe to my podcast channel. On this side, subscribe to this channel to help me get to 3 million. If you don't mind, turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, you better be kind to somebody and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.